What's up, YouTube? I hope you're having a wonderful day. Happy Easter for those who celebrate Easter and for everybody else. Happy Great Sunday. Today, I want to talk about finding your happiness and what makes you happy. Roll the intro. But there's something holding on in the way of being long gone. So I have a friend named Carly Finlay. Carly is an appearance activist, a writer, a blogger, and all the things. And on Thursday she was on TV on a show called The Project in Australia, talking about an awkward interview she did the day before. Well, our next guest is a writer, speaker, podcaster, and one of Australia's leading disability advocates, working to educate others on what it's like to live with a disability or different appearance. Yesterday, a bizarre interview on ABC Radio left many wondering just how far we still have to go. It can be really tiring, you know, even before I've opened my mouth, people have a assumption about why I look the way I do. You know, they might think I'm Kid, sunburnt. Or kids burnt. pointing at you in the kids, street. Yeah, kids being scared. That can be really hard as well. You know, I don't want to scare kids. Um, you know, people... We can't I guess, have got on Halloween. No. Well, the interview with ABC Melbourne's John Fain got worse. The presenter was asking Carly if she can still have sex uh, de and defending strangers who come up to her with offers of prayers. So we're going to talk to Carly Finlay now. Please welcome Carly Finlay. <laughs> Carly... A lot of people have been very upset by this and taken offence on your behalf. I'm interested to know what it is that offended and upset you. Sure, it was just really uncomfortable and I wondered whether people without disability or facial differences would have been asked those questions because what John asked me was to discuss the point of microaggressions and, and the point of these intrusive questions, but in fact they were intrusive themselves. Was it everything or specific things in the um, interview? I think the the probably the horror point for me was when he said that my face would be good at Halloween yeah. and I've written so much about this stuff about appropriation of costumes and things um, yeah that that was really really hard and, and I, I sat there because I wanted to be professional you know I wasn't going to storm out I I wanted to to give him a chance and to have a really great conversation and you know I'm I'm pleased with how it went on my end maybe but hope to be treated better. You were incredibly composed through the whole thing. Has he apologised to you? Yeah, um, he apologised on air today, but not to me personally. Right, are you disappointed by that? Um, I accept his apology and I welcome it and I'm really happy to have a conversation with him further, you know, be it in private or on air. You are grace personified. <laughs> I, th I think it's just the, <laughs> the constant questions, even on the way here, the taxi driver, as I was coming to the project, uh, he said, uh, what's, what's wrong? What's on your face? And then, and then I said nothing and he said, you'll wet my car seats. I thought, I don't know who smears their face over car seats. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if that's, that's a sexual thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I did tweet it. <laughs> it seems like talking to people should be common sense, even if they have f facial yeah. difference, but it can be complex territory for people when mm -hmm. they don't really know how to navigate things. So do you have any advice for people about how to communicate yeah. apart from just be a decent human being? <laughs> <laughs> that. Yeah, I mean, just say hello and, and talk to people like you would talk to a non-disabled person. You know, make them feel welcome. Don't let the first thing that comes out of your mouth be something that's inappropriate, be something that you wouldn't like to be asked yourself. Often it seems like we're making progress with disability representation. You know, Dylan Alcott's been on the show mm -hmm. a lot and Kurt Fernley. And the, yeah. But what areas do you feel like we're still lagging behind? Yeah, um, I think it's about representing many voices and so many voices don't get heard. You know, 90% of women with intellectual disability have been sexually assaulted in their life and that's a huge statistic. Oh, really? wow. Yeah, that's and you know, we, we don't hear from many, many disabled people and we need to. We need to be amplifying their voices. Um, today I shared a couple of shocking disability stories on my Facebook because I was getting media attention and I wanted these stories to be heard. Yeah. Yeah. Using your voice for good, that's for sure. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Carly. Lovely to meet you. John Fain's apology and the ABC's full statement is on our website. Would you please thank the incredibly gracious <laughs> Carly Finlay. And what followed was 
a lot of the media attention. I'm really proud of Kari because she worked really hard to get on there and she's worked really hard to get where she is at the moment and it's been great to see her climb the ladder of getting noticed because that's what she wanted to do and you hear her speak about the issues that matter to her which are primarily around disability and appearance activism. But on Friday night it was really disappointing and I saw a Facebook post from another member of the disability community having a go at Kari and really just ripping her to shreds and I thought and it got me wondering about why people do that why do people have to um try and rip apart um somebody else's experience instead of congratulating them being proud and happy for it making it to where they wanted to make it. I guess this negative Facebook post was about they weren't happy with some of the things Kari said. And that's fine. You don't have to be. You don't have to believe in everything Kari says. Kari does not speak to anyone, everyone. I don't agree with some of the stuff that Kari says all the time. Will I ever go and make a Facebook post and criticize and make general, general accusations of speaking for the entire disability community? Probably not. It's a mere calling and the person who posted the abuse about Kali. We are all a part of the disability community. I have a disability, Kali has a disability, and the person who posted the post has a disability too. And I believe that even more so we should be criticizing each other's work. And if we do, we should do it so publicly. Maybe I'm being a little bit too high hearted there, where I say it was criticism because it wasn't criticism. It was more a direct attack on Kali and I just don't believe that we need to do that and that's not needed and so that's why I spoke out about it on the night and then I got blocked from her Facebook. I went to bed thinking about what makes me happy and what I need to do in my life to bring happiness to me and my family and to everyone around me. I have to say, since joining YouTube, I found the level of criticism and abuse to be very, very low. A lot of people on here are very, very open to um, many, many voices. And it's really refreshing. And I guess that, that's where I've been trying to put my energy recently in having, um, in, for me to be happy, I like to create things, I like to make my own voice, I like to take photos and video of all the things that I like. And I think that's a lot better way of maintaining the happiness rather than um, shooting down people who don't necessarily need to be shut down in the first place. And I think if we can all create something where we can find our happiness, find our happiness whether it be photography or disability rights or whatever you're into writing, songwriting, reading, as long as we got something that we love doing that we should always focus on that and I feel like sometimes people like to shut down people before really looking at themselves and what they're about it's a lot much more worthy finding something you love and doing what you want to do and creating your own platform. So I just wanted to wrap up by saying that once again that's another reason why I chose to start YouTube is because I love this platform and this platform gives me the freedom to do whatever I want and post whatever I want and the, the feedback is so lovely and I've spoken to many of you 
so far. I just want to say thanks once again for watching and liking. I've got almost 300 minutes under my belt in watch time. So it's fantastic. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful Easter and I will see you in the next video.